Hi everyone and welcome to another short uh, video um, of palliative care education and today what we're going to be talking about is looking a bit more closely at um, switching opioids, why we switch opioids and really to try and help you to understand how an opioid switch works and how we use it to our advantage um, to get better pain control for our patients. So, in one of my previous videos where we looked at opioid toxicity, we, we looked at uh, an example of a patient where we were in quite a difficult situation. We had a patient who uh, was opioid toxic, but at the same time, they were still in pain. And the dilemma there is that obviously to manage the opioid toxicity, you want to try and reduce down the amount of opioid that the patient's taking. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to do that and sacrifice the pain relief for the patient. And the way that we manage this is we do an opioid switch. Now, in order to understand how that works, we, are, we need to sort of go through a, a couple of basic concepts. Um, and this is an area which, if you want a lot of detail, can get really, really complicated. Um, but I like to keep things quite simple. I'm not a pharmacologist, um, but we do need to sort of talk a little bit about opioid receptors. Now, one of the things that, that we know about opioids is that there's a number of opioid receptors. And it, when it comes to um, analgesia um, use, there's three opioid receptors. And if you probably remember from your pharmacology lectures, um, they've been assigned some Greek names, so we've got Delta, Kappa, and Mu. But for the purposes of this explanation, I don't even really want to get into the details of those receptors. Um, so I'm just going to stick to a fairly simple concept, and we'll have uh, receptor 1, receptor 2, and receptor 3. Now, if we take a drug, and let's, let's start off with our gold standard opioid. Let's take morphine. Morphine will have an affinity, a, a profile of activity against a variety of those receptors. So let's just hypothetically say that morphine is fully antagonistic in opioid receptor 1. Doesn't do anything in opioid receptor 2. And there's a partial agonist of opioid receptor 3. We effectively get sort of like a combination lock. Um, so we've got sort of a unique kind of um, combination of activity against a variety of opioid receptors, which for some patients might be the best fit. But for a patient who is still struggling to get analgesia, and despite the fact that you've increased their opioid, and we're now at the point where they're becoming opioid toxic, Clearly that's not the best fit for that patient and that's why we switch to an alternative opioid. So for instance, let's say we change to another drug, let's say we change to oxycodone. It's going to have a slightly different combination of activity. And for this drug, it might be that it's, it's fully antagonistic against opioid receptor 2 and it's got a little bit of activity against opioid receptor 1 and 3. That might mean that that's the better fit for our individual patient. So whereas we weren't winning with morphine and we were getting toxicity, 
if we switch them to an alternative drug, one, we might get better um, efficacy in terms of analgesia, and that in turn might allow us to use lower dosages and might also help to reduce down the toxic effects. And there's a variety of opioids out there. We've also got hydromorphone. That again might have a profile that's unique, different from the other opioids, but might be a better fit for a particular patient. So when we're switching opioids, we're trying to sort of take advantage of this unique profile that the different opioids have in terms of how they fit as a combination with the different opioid receptors. So in terms of, um, of how we deal with toxicity, this is, this is how we're able um, to switch the opioid, and yes, we've still got the patient on an opioid, and, you, and you, you might initially think, well, just swapping one opioid for another isn't gonna help with opioid toxicity. But because really no individual opioid is, in, is, is like another, they've all got their unique characteristics um, in terms of their, their pharmacology, we're able to exploit this and, and often switching the opioid, if you've been having difficulty, can often have a significant benefit. Now, in order to do this safely and effectively, you've got to have some knowledge of really what the comparative doses are between the various opioids. If you're going to switch someone from morphine to oxycodone, you've got to know how they sort of compare in terms of potency. Now, that's going to be the subject of another video that I've prepared. Um, obviously, you can use opioid conversion charts, but I would really encourage you to have a look at the video that we've done on um, switching opioids in their comparative doses because that's going to give you an added safety net um, to be able to understand when perhaps you might have misread the chart um, and, and it just gives you a bit more confidence. So I very much encourage you to have a look at, at that video but I hope that this has helped you to understand a little bit about the underlying principles behind how opioid switching works.